nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy, Big Johnny G, the Two Gun Fixit presents Legendary Gaming. We've got another Tabletop Takeout Tuesday, my friends. But of course, my regular friends and viewers, subscribers know that. You know what to expect, because we deliver a video every day of the week. If you didn't know, maybe you're new here. And every Tuesday, I tell you some reasons why I love a particular game. This isn't a full review. You're not going to get the whole setup and how to play and everything. This is bullet points about why I like and love certain games. I also want to say thank you. Uh, a few weeks back, we had a couple of sales on our Zazzle store. So uh, some of our merch got sold. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. I also hope you enjoy today. Because today I'm going to tell you why I love Legend of Drizzt, the board game. So why don't you join me down the table and we'll find out why I enjoy this game. Thank you so much for joining me down here, everyone, while I tell you why I enjoy and love aspects of this game. Now, this is the third game in the series that <laughs> you see up here behind me. I have it out of order. Uh, Castle Ravenloft is first, then Wrath of Ashardalon, and then Drist. Yeah. So, but I like it that order. I don't know why. <laughs> but this is the third game that came out for the... Dungeons and Dragons Adventure System Cooperative Board Game Series. Woo, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it sure is. But it, it means a lot because it means that these games are one in the same. These you can you can think of these almost as if now this isn't exactly what it is, but you can think of it almost as if modules. Uh, because all the characters are interchangeable, the class abilities are interchangeable, and that carries forth with all the games, including this one, The Legend of Drist. Uh, so this is, and, and it's also based on just a legendary uh, system, Dungeons and Dragons in general, legendary system that everybody knows about uh, to one degree or another. Whether you know the character of Drizzt or not, everyone is familiar with the term, with the name D&D. &D. So uh, it's a win right there, especially for me, because I love Dungeons & Dragons. I've been playing that my whole life in one way, shape, form, or another. It's kind of defined me. Now, on top of the fact that you're coming into something more than likely familiar to you with one degree or another, if you've um, played or own any of the other games in the system, then that familiarity is going to even be more so. It's going to carry through because most of the rules and everything are pretty much what you remember from the other games. Not only is this interchangeable with the other games, uh, but there's an earlier system called uh, Dungeon Command. Dungeon Command. And uh, you can integrate those with this. There's, I think, four of them, one for Cormier, one for Undead, and the two I casually enjoy getting my hands on, which is uh, an Orc one uh, about the blood of Grumpsh, and then there's the Sting of Lauf. Very cool. Yeah, and I'd like to, I wouldn't mind getting those and seeing how I can incorporate them into the entire series of games. So that's, that's really cool. Now, up until this point, all the tiles in the games is a tile laying system. I enjoy that, I do. Uh, besides the, the, that general fact that I enjoy the tile laying system, this changes things up a little bit. This is the first game in the series to start changing things up uh, because they have cavern. It's a cavern dungeon, not a hewn man-made uh, dungeon. And there's gonna be differences uh, because of that. 
And later on, there's other changes in the tiles with the other game series a little bit. I'm not going to get into that now. I will with the individual games as I continue talking about them. Now, as this series has uh, continued and grown, uh, this game, in line with the first and the second, we get to see a little bit of a growth with the monsters, in a sense. They become a little tougher than in the first two games. And that's, that's a nice change, especially when you have played the other two games beforehand. Now, normally these games come with five new and different characters from each other of the box sets, which is cool. It's amazing. It's a one to five player game. You know, I, I could nitpick and say that because it's a one to five player game, wanting a little bit of replayability, you should have six choices of characters. But you know what? This is fine. I'm, I'm happy with what we have, what we've been given. Um, and besides that, you can also build on with the, with the classes in each one. If you have a fighter in three of the different games, uh, you can use any of the fighter uh, skill and ability cards with any fighter class character that you're choosing to use. So that's fun. Now this, this doesn't have five. This has eight, a total of eight new heroes uh, that you can that you can pick from, that you can choose. Now, there are still only five new classes, but hey, at least we got five new classes, and that's pretty awesome. Something different that we see happening here uh, with this particular title is the use of stances. Now, I've seen battle stances uh, in a few other games, a small handful of them, and it's a very interesting concept and take. I, I, I actually enjoy it. Uh, it adds an extra depth to the tactics uh, of the game when you're playing it. More strategy uh, comes into play. Three of the characters, three of the new characters in this game can utilize different stances during gameplay. Uh, so that's really cool because if you have played the other games before, this is something new to the system for you to uh, play around with, have some fun, and, and learn how best to use it. Now, also, the, uh, the game itself, as you're running through the adventures in the adventure book, there are, for the first time, we get to see some pre-mapped scenarios. So you're not always, in every game, going to be running it as a tile lane game. I like that. It does. It gives it this sort of sense of uh, a, a place. You know, it, in Dungeons & Dragons, especially with low-level characters, it's kind of important to establish a, a, a base uh, at a, in a small town or village that you're going to be able to go back to and get supplies, get healing, uh, you know, th things and ways to stay alive. And this, having this in it, uh, this little pre-made area, it, it's kind of cool because it harkens back to something like that, I think. So um, that's really fun. Now, again, uh, you know, with all these games, it's miniature heavy. And the miniatures in this game, just like the rest in the series, are pretty damn good. I'm not going to say that they're the best cast and model that I've ever seen, but they are a lot better than most. So I put them up in pretty good. Yes, it would be best, pretty good, good, eh, eh, and, uh, <laughs> if I was going to give it a rating from top to bottom. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the, the miniatures, they're, they're beautiful to look at. Uh, basically, if you're familiar with the pre-painted plastic miniatures, which is the Coast uh, introduced, uh, you know, way, way back when they introduced the third edition, think of that. Those are the miniatures that they're using, just unpainted versions of them. So hey, if you like painting miniatures, you get to go hog wild on uh, some that are usually sold pre-painted. Well, that's really extra fun for miniature painters. I'm not, but hey, I, I love the way they look uh, on, the, on the board, on the table, even on the camera with the slideshows that I've done for a lot of these games. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, you know, the, the miniatures, they look great, they look thematic, they really, like, like any good miniature, it helps draw you into the game. So I gotta say that if you uh, enjoy this series to begin with, if you're familiar with uh, the adventure series, go for it. This is the kind of game you're going to want to play. Maybe you might want it on your shelf. You know, do a little more uh, research on it, maybe, before you, you spend your money on it. Uh, that's not my job to tell you how to spend your cash, but it is to inform you. 
That's not actually not my job. It's my hobby. <laughs> to inform you and uh, let you know of things that I like, how I think of them, why I think of them, uh, like like this show right here. So please check out Legend of Drizzt, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Adventure System board game. Uh, I, if, if, you, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like this series to begin with, you're really going to enjoy the game, I believe. So uh, thank you very much. I'm your buddy Big Giant G for Two Gun Pixel Presents <laughs> Legendary Gaming, and I. Yeah.